So Lewis structures and molecular geometry, when we're talking about molecular geometry, we are talking about only covalent compounds. Why? Oh, because they're sharing and they're bonds, and what do they form? Molecules, hence molecular structure and molecular shape, because it's molecules, okay? So the Lewis structures, that was what we did the other day. We did the electron dots, you know, very simple. Um, and we can use to indicate the bonds either by electrons or by dashes. I'll use dashes. Um, molecular geometry is the 3D arrangement, okay? We're drawing these on flat paper, so obviously they don't look 3D to us. But in reality, molecules are 3D. They're not drawn flat on paper. Um, and then molecular polarity has to do with the polarity of the molecule, okay? And it has to do with the distribution of that charge. So it is highly possible to have a bond that is a polar bond, but if the distribution of charge is even around the molecule, then your actual molecule can be nonpolar. So you have to keep that in mind. And we're going to talk about that in, in a second, and we'll draw these things, okay? Uh, Vesper theory is the theory that governs how we're naming these shapes. And what that stands for is valence shell electron pair repulsion. So what does that mean? Basically it means this. Um, the molecules and the bonds will orient themselves in a way that they minimize those repulsions of all those electrons. Okay? The atoms themselves have some repulsion to each other or repel each other and then the electrons. Okay? On the central atom, um, if there are lone pairs, they occupy space around that. They occupy space on, this, on the terminal atom, too, but those will not affect the shape. It's the uh, lone pairs on the central atom, okay? And they actually have a little bit more, uh, take up a little bit more space and repel more than the bonded atoms, okay? But these are all can be thought of as domains around that central atom. And the domains can either be a bonded atom or they can be a, a lone pair because it's taking up space around that atom, okay? And then you have this chart. First period got the wrong chart. That's why it went terribly wrong today because two very important ones were left out. And I would, was referring to it, and they were like, that's not on here. And I'm like, what do you mean that's not on here? So it was bad, okay? Uh, anyway, so you have this chart. These are the shapes that you will be responsible for. You will need to know these on a test. Um, the bond angles, I'm going to tweak a little bit for some of the uh, shapes, but when we get to them, I'll tell you, and you can just jot them in on this chart. So, do we only need to know what like, it looks like, or do we need to know how it looks You need to know, you need to be able to name that shape. So, like, if I give you a thing and say, you know, CH4, its structure is A, tetrahedral, B, linear, whatever, you need to be able to say it's tetrahedral, okay? Will you need to be able to draw it for the test? No, why? Because what did I tell you about the test? Multiple it's choice. all multiple choice, yeah. Are you gonna... Nope, stop drawing the shapes right now. <laughs> yes, I'm going to explain the chart. <laughs> I mean, yeah, well, I mean, it was a bad morning. I could just leave it here and go, go figure it out, but, you know, I, I'm back on track, okay? So, you know, I've, I'm the bug that splatted against the windshield. Now I'm, now I'm good. Okay. Okay. So we're going to use this chart, and we're going to draw these Lewis structures, okay? Um, this chart's also in your book, and there's all kinds of charts online, okay? Um, so we're going to start with something simple. We're going to start with methane, CH4, okay? I'm making, not making up compounds. These are actual real compounds, but I just, they're popping into my head. Some of these show up on the worksheet you have today, but I will tell you this, especially because the first period was such a rough day this morning. Uh, this worksheet is just for practice. It's not going to be for a grade. But I highly recommend you draw these things out tonight. It's low stakes environment to practice and see if you understand it. Tomorrow we will be doing a lab that Tuan is setting up right now with Play-Doh and toothpicks. So we'll actually build the 3D molecules so that you, it's a, it is sort of a lab activity, yeah. Yeah, you don't have a write-up. Well, but you will turn in the ch you will turn in a chart with your drawings of what you build. Okay. So you'll build them. You'll uh, draw out on the lab tables. We have some neon markers, so you'll draw out uh, on there the shape, you know, tetrahedral, if it's polar or nonpolar, and then it's bonding. 
to do that tomorrow. So this is just practice because this is, at first it's kind of confusing and then it, it makes sense, okay? And we're doing simple molecules. So CH4. So if you look at this paper that says steps for drawing Lewis structures, okay? First thing it says is to get an electron count. How many total electrons do we need to show in our structure? So carbon has how many valence electrons? Four. Four. Okay. And hydrogen has how many? One. But we have times four because we have four of them, right? So we need a total of eight valence electrons shown in our Lewis structure. So the next step says to draw the skeleton structure. Okay. Well, we know that carbon looks like this. It's electron dot, right? And remember where there's an open spot, it can form a bond. So how many bonds is it going to form? Four. So we're going to draw it with four bonds, and then we're going to attach the hydrogen. Okay? So remember, each one of those lines is representing how many electrons? Two. 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 So I have two, four, six, eight. I have eight electrons. So this is a complete Lewis structure. Because carbon has its eight valence electrons around it, okay? Hydrogen has how many around each one of it? Two. Two. You shouldn't ever, ever draw eight around hydrogen, right? Okay? Whenever you draw a molecule with carbon, carbon's going to always be your central atom. Hydrogen will never be a central atom. Why? It only has one electron to share. Only one thing can bond to it. It can't be central. It's going to always be a terminal. No, okay. that would be a duet. And that's not a joke, that's actually what it's called. <laughs> I'm talking about the carbon. Not the oh, the carbon, yes, the carbon would have an octet. Okay. The hydrogen has a duet. Yeah, okay. All right, so look at your chart. This atom has four things bonded to it and zero lone pairs. So it's like this. It's... Okay, four things bonded, it zero, it's what? It is tetrahedral. Okay, and what does it say that the bond angle is for a tetrahedral structure? 109.5. Okay, so that's its bond angle. How do we know it's tetrahedral? Because if you look, if you look at your chart, four, look under where it says four domains has four bonded atoms and zero lone pairs, so it's tetrahedral, okay? Now we're going to talk about polarity. And remember, polarity is the distribution of charge. Is the distribution of charge equal around this, okay? It is, but I want to show you how you're able to do this for other molecules as well. So carbon and hydrogen is our bond that each one of these has, right? Which would you expect to have a higher electronegativity, carbon or hydrogen? Carbon. 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 So we draw what's called a dipole. Okay, and we're basically showing the uneven distribution of charge. So we start with the lower one, and we draw like a plus sign, and then we draw a vector arrow that way. So that's showing that the electron is spending more time with carbon. Okay, so that's how we show the unevenness of the, of the bond. So the bond is a polar bond, but if I take my vector arrow for each one of these and draw them out, I see that it's an even distribution of charge. So if I look all the way around, it's the same all the way around, so this would be a nonpolar molecule. Okay? Same concept, there's a slightly positive or a slightly negative it creates those poles, and that's when you get polar. Well, they're not doing that here. It's an even distribution, so it's nonpolar. Okay? Now, what if I did this one? Are we good for me to erase this before I do? I'm a little kind of confused. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so in that picture, you drew the arrow going towards carbon, but in that one... Oh, I did! Oh! I'm a confused. Okay, flip them all. Okay. Flip all <laughs> In the circle? Yeah. I just drew them backwards. Oh, they're supposed to be facing carbon. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's why I was a little confused. Is that part of the yeah. You don't necessarily have to do that to figure it out. You could have, we, y'all looked at this before we did that and said, it's a nonpolar, it's all the same all the way around. So I'm just showing you what that, how, how we know that. So if, if there was like missing one. Ah, hydrogen, hold that thought. Okay. Let's do this one now. CH3. 
<laughs> That's weird. It's not on mine. But I hope it doesn't pop the recording. That is so weird. <laughs> Usually when you say erase all stro uh, strokes, it does that. And of course, the people watching the video, it's not doing it on my thing. Just ignore that line. We'll just use it in a minute. What is going on? <laughs> it is not. I'm telling you, the gremlins are attacking me. All right, there we go. Bye, John. Hope your day's better than mine. Okay, CH3Br, okay? So if we were to draw this, we would need four electrons for carbon, three for the hydrogen, that's three times one, okay? And then we need seven for the bromine. So we need a total of 14 electrons. So carbon is gonna be our central atom. We're gonna put three hydrogen on there. It does not matter where you put that bromine. You just put them in one of the spots. And then we're going to give bromine its lone pairs. Okay. So, do I have 14 electrons? Yes. Okay, so our Lewis structure is complete. Still four things bonded to it, to it zero lone pair, still tetrahedral. Quick question. So, is the first element in the compound always the central? Not always, but usually. Not always, but usually. Like, for instance, uh, H2O, hydrogen is the first thing listed. It's not the central atom. So there's an, so I can't say always because then you get the H2O and it changes. Yes? So in terms of the carbon, if, it's, if there's carbon in it, it will be the central Carbon's atom. almost almost always the central atom. And how do you determine which one is the central atom? The least electronegative. The lower electronegativity. The least electronegative or the, the most? With the, no, the most electronegative is not usually the central atom. Well, then why is carbon on the other side? Except hydrogen will not ever be a central atom. It can't be. Oh, so because, okay. Yeah, it can't be. There's no way for it to be, okay? But in general, again, in chemistry, have you not figured out when we say in general, there's always exceptions? Yeah, okay. All right, so just by looking at this, what would we say this is, polar or nonpolar? Definitely. We don't need to draw our little vector arrows to figure that out. But if we did want to draw our vector arrows, okay, they would look like this. But now carbon would look like that because bromine is more electronegative. So now I got plus, 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 oh, negative over here, so it's definitely polar because it is not... Basically, look at it. If it's even Steven all the way around, it's probably nonpolar. But if it's not, then it's polar. Okay? Let's look at water. And most are going to be polar, though. Huh? Most are going to be polar. Um, there are, I'm not going to say most, but there are definitely more polar things than nonpolar things. So in our lab last week, one of our items was nonpolar, so it didn't dissolve in water, right? Because of that. Yeah. Basically, if it has extra, like, Okay, so let's do water. I don't know what you just said. Say that again. Oh, I was just going to ask. Um, if basically, if one of them has more uh, electrons, then it's going to be more electronegative. It'll be polar. Um, yeah, in that case, yeah. But if I had done, say, if I had done CF3Cl like that, right. that would, even though those were all have electrons all, around them, yeah. but they're all different, it would uh, that would be polar. Okay. okay. Okay, so water, we have two hydrogen, so we got two electrons there. We have an oxygen, so we have six electrons there, so we need a total of eight electrons. Okay, so we're going to draw our skeleton structure, an H uh, bonded to each, and then normally we would say we'd draw that. But look at your chart, if you have two things bonded and two lone pairs, what shape does it tell you you have? Nope. Um, bent. bent. So it would actually not look like this. It would look like this. But we didn't draw the other one that way. Because it wasn't bent. So this is bent or angular. 
I'm just telling you, sometimes you'll see bent or angular. Either one of those is a correct thing. Because it did not have lone pairs on it. This is where you're going to put on a bent or angular. I want you to put 104.5. Because actually, bromine wasn't in the middle. Okay, it's the central atom that determines your uh, shape. Okay? So oxygen will always be bent if it's a central atom? If it's a central atom, if it has two bonds, yeah. Okay? Now, between oxygen and hydrogen, which one is more electronegative? Oxygen. Oxygen. So our, our dipole would look like this, right? So would that be a polar or a nonpolar? Polar. Definitely polar. Because this side over here is slightly negative, and then over here we have slightly positive. So it's definitely a polar molecule. Okay? And did you make this uh, change on your chart for your... Uh, the, I'm telling you for bent, for bent or angular, you get, it's actually 104. Uh, it, yeah, those were bent and angular can be used interchangeably, but I did want you to make the correction of the um, 104.5 instead of 109, and the reason for that is these lone pairs take up space around there, okay? So you kind of think of them like they're taking up the space, and they actually take up more space, a little bit more space than the bonded atoms, and so they kind of push them down a little bit, and, and it changes just a tiny bit, okay? So now let's do um, BF3. Sounds fun. Boron trifluoride. Is that the actual name for it? Mm -hmm. It is the actual name for it. Okay, so boron has how many valence electrons? Four. Three. Three, three, three. Three valence electrons. Fluorine, we have three of them, and they have seven. So 21 plus 3 is? 24. Thank you. 24 electrons. So boron is going to be our central atom. Can fluorine ever be a central atom? No. no. It can't. It only has one electron spot to share. Why if it's bonded with hydrogen? I'll show you that. Okay. Looks like that. And then it would be very right? There is no central atom on that one. So sometimes there won't be a central atom? Well, yeah, if there's only two things, <laughs> there can't be a central atom. Okay, so boron it looks like this, right? It has three valence electrons. So it's going to form how many bonds? Say three. three. Thank you. Okay, we've given boron its three uh, electrons that it can share, so it's only going to have a total of six around it. Remember when we talked about the octet rule, boron and below were exceptions. But now we need to give fluorine all of its lone pairs. So when we ca count that up, it should be 24. 24. So our Lewis structure is complete. Okay? So now look at your chart. If you have three things bonded and zero lone pairs, trigonal, what? Planar. Okay? Trigonal planar. So fluorine, definitely most electronegative. So our dipoles would look like this, right? And is that an even distribution of charge? No. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Negative, yes. negative, negative all the way around. This would be nonpolar. My bad. What's the like degrees thing like? Ah, what is it? You have it. 120. Well, what's 360 divided by 3? 120. Yeah, it's evenly out, so it's 120 degrees. I didn't ignore that. Okay. So these are lone pairs for fluorine, but they do not affect your structure. It's the lone pairs on the central atom, which we're going to now do three things bonded to it, one lone pair, and see what happens.
So we're going to do ammonia, which I do not suggest you ever breathe. It will burn the nose hairs. That's true. But isn't that in, like, It's in cleaning, some cleaning supplies. I thought it was in your pee. But you don't want to inhale Is it in your pee? Mm, it's a question. Uh, it, I mean, it's in, yeah. It's that's in my cat pee. I was like, all right. <laughs> okay, nitrogen has. <laughs> yeah, let's, I'm recording. Let's not talk about this right now. Okay. <laughs> nitrogen has five valence electrons. Hydrogen, we have three times one, so we need eight valence electrons. So nitrogen, going to bond the H, the H, and the H. That only gives me six electrons. And how many do I need? Eight. 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 And no, nitrogen really seems to be oh. missing it. So I'm going to give nitrogen a lone pair. Whoops. So now nitrogen has eight. Three bonds. Three bonds. So now find three items bonded, one lone pair, and tell me what shape you get. Trigonal pyramid. Sometimes so in some things you might sing trigonal pyramid or sometimes you might sing trigonal pyramidal. They basically mean the same thing, pyramid or pyramidal. Make it sound fancy. Okay? I say trigonal, it might be trigonal, whatever you want to say, I don't care. Um, and then let's talk about our dipoles. Hydrogen or nitrogen, it's going to look like this, right? But is that even? Because you have those right there. So this is a polar molecule. Also, when you have trigonal pyramidal, make that adjustment. Your uh, angle actually ends up being about 107. Again, this is taking up space around here, so it kind of pushes those down a little bit. Okay. Let's see what else I need to draw. I'm trying to kind of cover one in from each little thing on your worksheet help you out. So we've done that. Let's do uh, one of the polyatomics. Okay. So when I ask for a picture of the test, is it going to be like these pictures or is it going to be like the ones with the no. Um, Both. It might be both. But you don't ever have to draw it. It'll be a picture. Okay. Or what it may do is it may say, hey, NH, it may just say, what is the structure for NH3? And then you have to select the structure. If you have it memorized, that's one thing. Or you could jot, you could jot it out. You'll get scratch paper. Okay. So you don't ever have to draw one? Mm, not on this test. I need to change it for next year. Uh, but it's an all multiple choice on Canvas. It is a Canvas. Wow. Whoa. Okay. And it's on Monday, right? It is on Monday. Okay. So we'll do PO4, 3 minus, which is one of the polyatomics you have to have memorized for Friday. What is it? Um, Pio, four, three. Pio, like, it ends in eight. It ends in eight. Phosphate. 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 Okay. So when it has a charge of three minus, what does that mean? It has three extra electrons than it should. So just like before, phosphorus has five valence electrons. Oxygen has four times six valence electrons, so that would be a total of 29 electrons. But because of this negative three, we have to add three more. And where do you put those? Let's start drawing it and see what happens. First thing, draw a skeletal structure. I have phosphorus and four oxygen. So phosphorus is, is lower in electronegativity, but plus it only makes sense to put four oxygen on there. Okay, so phosphorus has its eight, it's happy, but the other atoms don't have their eight. Let's go give them their eight. And I thought oxygen only has six. No. no. They have six valence electrons, but when they're bonded, they get eight. That's why they bond. Oh, yeah. So count those up, and what does it come up to be? Thirty-two. Okay. Well, I mean, I've by drawing the structure, they're already taken care of in there. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's okay. 
Do we need the huge brackets? Yes, you need the bracket. When you draw a, a polyatomic, you should draw a bracket because you need to show that the whole thing has the charge. Now, what's the shape? Uh, that would be a tetrahedral. Tetrahedral. Four things bonded, no lone pairs on the central atom. What about polarity or non? Is it polar or nonpolar? It's not polar. Huh, trick question. It's an ion. Has a charge. It's neither. It's a. It's an ion. It acts as a full out charge on that thing. Yeah, that was a trick question. If it wasn't an ion and didn't have a charge, then that would be nonpolar. But the whole thing, and the reason being is normally. Normally, phosphorus only forms three bonds, but in this case, it bonded, so it's sharing more of elect more electrons than it should, and so that's why. Okay. Now let's talk about some double bonded stuff. Actually, I want to challenge you. CO two. I'm going to pause the video, and I want you to try to draw that Lewis structure. Okay, so carbon has four valence electrons for carbon. For oxygen, we have two times six, which is 12. So we need 16 total electrons, okay? So carbon is going to be our central atom. So we'll draw the skeletal structure, okay? So right now, carbon only has how many electrons around it? Four. Four. How many does it have to have? Eight. Eight. Carbon has to have eight around it. So the only way to give carbon eight is to double bond it with the oxygen. Now carbon has eight. Okay? So now we need to give both the oxygens eight. So it needs two sets of lone pairs. Okay? Two sets of lone pairs. Now two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, we have enough. Okay? What is this shape? Two things bonded, no lone pairs. Linear. Linear for 180. If we look at our dipoles, they look like this. So would this be polar or nonpolar? Uh, nonpolar, non yeah. Nonpolar. Okay. Now, Carbon, with, there's one exception, carbon will get four bonds every time, and carbon will never have lone pairs, except for one exception, and that is carbon monoxide. So on your paper, carbon monoxide is there, so draw a little star by it and put exception. Will only, it'll only get three bonds, and it will have a lone pair. On the pink paper? No, it's not on. Carbon monoxide is not on the pink paper. The what? On your homework, there's carbon monoxide, okay? And then I think that that is all I wanted to cover today, and I want you to practice.